How Quartz Movements Actually Work A quartz watch runs on a battery that sends electricity through a small piece of quartz crystal. When you pump electricity through that crystal, something called the piezoelectric effect kicks in. The crystal vibrates at an absurdly specific rate, exactly 32,768 times per second, not 32,767, not 32,769, exactly 32,768, which is convenient because that number divides cleanly down to one second when you run it through a simple computer chip. The integrated circuit inside the watch takes those vibrations, does some basic math, and outputs one clean electrical pulse every single second. That pulse drives a stepping motor, which is just a tiny electromagnet that rotates a gear in precise increments. The gear train then transfers that motion to the hands on your dial making the second hand tick forward once per second in that distinctive jump everyone associates with quartz watches. The whole system uses fewer than 20 components, which sounds almost insulting when you compare it to the 150-plus parts crammed into a mechanical movement. But that simplicity is the entire point. Fewer parts mean fewer things that can go wrong, which is why quartz movements can be mass-produced by machines without a single human touching them. The crystal itself does not care about your feelings or your heritage. It just vibrates at the same frequency every single time, which makes it stupidly accurate. A mechanical watch can lose 10 seconds in a day and nobody bats an eye. A quartz movement losing 10 seconds in a month would be considered embarrassing. And if you add thermocompensation, which adjusts for temperature changes affecting the crystal, that same 10-second drift gets stretched out over an entire year. The battery lasts anywhere from 2 to 10 years depending on the movement, and when it dies, you just swap it out. No winding, no servicing, no existential conversations with a watchmaker who lives on a mountain. Just electricity, crystal vibrations, and time that actually matches your phone. Standard Analog Quartz Movements This is the most common type of quartz movement you will ever encounter, and it is exactly what you picture when someone says quartz watch. A battery, a quartz crystal vibrating at 32,768 times per second, an integrated circuit, and a stepping motor that moves traditional hands around a dial. The second hand ticks once per second in that characteristic jump, the minute hand advances every 60 seconds, and the hour hand crawls forward accordingly. These movements are manufactured by the millions, primarily by companies like ETA, Ronda, Miyota, and Seiko. They are cheap, reliable, and completely interchangeable across different watch brands. If you buy a fashion watch for $50, it almost certainly has a standard analog quartz movement inside. The accuracy sits around plus or minus 15 seconds per month, which is more than adequate for anyone who is not trying to synchronize a space launch. The power consumption is low enough that a single battery can keep the watch running for two to three years before it needs replacement. Some movements stretch that to five years by using more efficient circuits or by limiting complications. The stepping motor inside rotates in fixed increments, usually 180 degrees per pulse, which is why the second hand does not sweep smoothly like a mechanical watch. It jumps one tick per second. This design saves power because the motor only activates once per second instead of oscillating constantly. The gears that transfer motion from the motor to the hands are simple and require minimal lubrication which is why quartz watches need almost no maintenance. You do not service them, you do not regulate them, you just wear them until the battery dies, replace the battery, and keep going. The simplicity extends to manufacturing as well. These movements are assembled by machines on production lines, with tolerances measured in fractions of a millimeter. No human hand needs to adjust a hairspring or poise a balance wheel. The computer chip does all the timekeeping and the motor does all the work. It is efficient, it is boring, and it is everywhere. Digital and Analog Digital Quartz Movements Digital quartz movements strip away the gears and hands entirely and display time as numbers on an LCD or LED screen. The same quartz crystal vibrates at 32,768 times per second. The same integrated circuit counts those vibrations, but instead of driving a motor, the circuit sends information directly to a liquid crystal display. The display itself uses minimal power, because it does not emit light. It just rearranges liquid crystals to block or allow light through, forming numbers that show hours, minutes, and seconds. LED displays, on the other hand, actually light up, which drains the battery faster, so most digital quartz watches use LCD. The advantage of going full digital is that you can cram additional functions into the same space, 
Stopwatches, countdown timers, alarms, multiple time zones, and backlighting all become trivial to implement because you are already working with a computer chip. Casio built an empire on this concept, turning cheap digital quartz movements into cultural icons with the F91W and the G-Shock line. Then you have analog digital hybrids, also called Anadigi movements, which combine traditional hands with a digital display. These movements use the same quartz crystal and integrated circuit, but split the output between a stepping motor for the analog hands and an LCD screen for additional information. You get the classic look of a dial with hands, plus a digital readout for things like the date, a second time zone, or a chronograph. The Casio AE1200, also known as the Royale, is a perfect example of a pure digital quartz watch. Meanwhile, watches like certain Seiko and Citizen models use Ana Digi setups to offer both traditional aesthetics and digital functionality. The downside is that digital displays age poorly. LCDs can develop dead segments, contrast fades over time, and if the display fails, you are usually replacing the entire module rather than repairing it. But for sheer functionality per dollar, digital and Ana Digi quartz movements are unbeatable. You get a calendar, a stopwatch, an alarm, and world time for less than the cost of a decent lunch. High Accuracy Quartz Movements High Accuracy Quartz, usually abbreviated as HAQ, is what happens when watch companies decide that losing 15 seconds per month is for peasants. Standard quartz movements are accurate, but CheQ movements take it to an absurd level by tightening tolerances and adding temperature compensation. A typical HAQ movement will lose or gain no more than 5 seconds per year. Some push that to 10 seconds per year, and a few, like the Citizen Chronomaster, rated at plus or minus 5 seconds per year, borders on ridiculous precision for a wristwatch. The key difference is thermocompensation. Quartz crystals change their vibration frequency slightly when exposed to different temperatures. Standard quartz movements ignore this and accept the resulting drift. HAQ movements include a thermistor that constantly monitors temperature and adjusts the frequency output to compensate. This keeps accuracy locked in whether you are in a sauna or a freezer. Grand Seiko produces some of the most respected HAQ movements in the industry, with their 9F series delivering plus or minus 10 seconds per year, along with instant date changes and a smooth sweeping second hand that ticks at 8 beats per second instead of the usual one. That gives it a more refined appearance mimicking the sweep of a mechanical movement without actually being one. The Citizen EcoDrive Chronomaster combines HAQ with solar charging, meaning the watch never needs a battery change and still maintains that 5 seconds per year accuracy. Longines uses the ETA 251.262 thermocompensated quartz movement in their VHP, or Very High Precision line, rated at plus or minus 5 seconds per year with a gear position detection system that auto-corrects the hands after impacts or magnetic exposure. HAQ movements cost more to produce because they require higher quality crystals, more complex circuits, and better manufacturing tolerances. But the result is a quartz watch that keeps time more accurately than anything short of an atomic clock. If you genuinely care about precision and not just the romanticism of gears, HAQ is the objective winner, solar and kinetic quartz movements. Solar quartz movements replace the disposable battery with a rechargeable cell that charges from light. Any light, sunlight, indoor lighting, even the glow from your phone screen will top up the power reserve, though direct sunlight works fastest. Citizen pioneered this technology with their EcoDrive line, and it solves the biggest hassle of owning a quartz watch. Battery replacement. The watch still uses a quartz crystal vibrating at 32,768 times per second, and it still drives the hands with a stepping motor, but instead of a primary cell that dies after three years, you have a rechargeable cell that lasts decades. Once fully charged, most solar quartz watches will run for six months in complete darkness. Some models push that to a year or more. The solar panel sits beneath the dial, either as a ring around the edge or integrated directly under the dial surface. As long as the watch sees occasional light, it stays charged indefinitely. The downside is that if you let it die completely, Recharging takes time. A few hours under direct sunlight gets it running again, but a full charge might take weeks of regular wear. Kinetic quartz movements take a different approach. Instead of light, they harvest energy from your wrist motion, just like an automatic mechanical watch. Seiko developed this technology, and it works by using a weighted rotor that spins as you move. 
That rotor drives a micro-generator, which charges a capacitor instead of winding a mainspring. The capacitor then powers the quartz circuit and stepping motor. A fully charged kinetic watch will run for six months without any motion, and some models include a power-saving mode that stops the hands when the watch is not being worn, preserving charge for up to four years. When you pick it up and move it, the hands automatically jump forward to the correct time. Both solar and kinetic movements cost more upfront than standard quartz, but they eliminate battery changes entirely. You get the accuracy and reliability of quartz without the recurring maintenance cost, unless the rechargeable cell degrades after 20 years, which it eventually will, but that is a problem for future you. Quartz chronographs and complications. Quartz chronographs add stopwatch functionality to the standard quartz movement, and they do it with far less complexity than their mechanical counterparts. A mechanical chronograph requires dozens of additional parts, column wheels, clutches, levers, and springs all working together to start, stop, and reset the timing function. A quartz chronograph just adds a few extra circuits and subdials. The integrated circuit handles all the timing logic, and additional stepping motors drive the chronograph hands independently from the main timekeeping hands. The result is a chronograph that is more accurate, more reliable, and costs a fraction of what a mechanical version would. Most quartz chronographs measure down to a hundredth of a second, which is functionally useless for anything you will actually time in real life, but it looks impressive when the subdial hand spins around. The ETA G10.211 and the Ronda 5030.D are common quartz chronograph movements found in mid-range watches. They are accurate. They reset to zero cleanly, and they do not require servicing every five years like a mechanical chronograph. Beyond chronographs, quartz movements handle other complications with equal ease. Perpetual calendars that account for leap years, month lengths, and date. Changes are simple to program into a quartz circuit. A mechanical perpetual calendar is a feat of engineering requiring hundreds of parts. A quartz perpetual calendar is a software problem. GMT and world time functions are equally straightforward. The circuit just outputs different hand positions or digital readouts for multiple time zones. Alarm functions, countdown timers, and tide indicators all get added without touching the physical movement. You just expand the circuit and the display. The Citizen Campanola Minute Repeater is one of the rare examples of a quartz movement replicating a traditional mechanical complication. It uses electronic chimes to audibly signal the time, mimicking the minute repeater complication that costs six figures in a mechanical watch. If your goal is functionality, quartz complications make infinitely more sense than mechanical ones. If your goal is appreciating craftsmanship, then quartz is the wrong conversation entirely. But for sheer capability, nothing touches it. And if you want to see how movement families evolve across an entire brand, check out every Seiko movement family.